Welcome to The Way In, episode five. We are the franchise, I'm Nick Murdocko, that's Gary Whitaker. Right. Today, we are going to have five rounds with Jonathan Chamber from APC, Adrenaline Performance Center, and we're gonna bring it to you live right here in his own gym. Of course, we're gonna be breaking down UFC 121, and but only the fights that really matter. Of According to Whitaker. Concerned. That's right. <laughs> Stick around, folks, we got a great show coming up for you. All right, so here you are with Jonathan Chamberg, and we're gonna go five rounds in the only way that we can with this man, which is verbally. So ready to go, five rounds? then. <laughs> Thank you, five rounds. Round one, I wanna know about, uh, you know, you're training, both, you're training uh, fighters, both uh, professional and amateurs, that when they walk through the doors and you see them coming at you, what do you look at, uh, you know, in terms of the, them being physical? Uh, do you look at their body types? Do you look at uh, their abilities that you know about from maybe the managers? Do you assess it on the grounds here? How do you assess how long is it going to take you to mold these people when they're coming through those doors into the specimens that they want to be? Well, I've seen so many athletes already that uh, I can usually group the athletes in different categories, you know, fast twitch, slow twitch, uh, what they need, body types. So uh, it's pretty much now it's it's down to uh, it'll take me a day or two, and, or I might even know in the first hour what these guys uh, are capable of. Uh, obviously, I've seen them fight before if they've if they're professional fighters for a long time, and if not, uh, I'll get a good sense of it right away. You know, I'll assess them here, but but pretty much. Right off the bat, I'll know uh, sort of what they need and what they, they need to uh, progress going forward. Round two. Jonathan, have you ever been surprised or can you even share with us, if someone walks through your doors and wants to get trained by you, uh, can you tell us if there was ever a time where someone showed up not in the top physical shape that you would have expected them to be, especially as being a professional athlete? Uh, I would probably uh, put two people in that category for different reasons. Uh, George St. Pierre being one of them because he had, All already, he had already been a world champion before he had beat Matt Hughes and he had lost to Matt Serra. And uh, the way I, I saw him uh, you know, compete, I thought he would be a phenom in here right off the bat. And it was surprising to see that a lot of his strength numbers were really low and uh, you know, he had trouble doing chin-ups by himself. And, uh, you know, it's it's now he's you know he's doing them with a hundred pound dumbbell around his waist, and you know he, he, he's he's a very powerful and strong guy. But it was just shocking to see that, that he had gotten that far uh, on those numbers. And uh, another guy was Miguel Torres, who just came uh, to the camp, and he has unbelievable cardio, but his anaerobic capacity and, and his and his strength numbers were really low. Uh, and again, you know, just shocking to see someone, you know, who's been world champion and, you know, pound for pound, you know, one of the greatest fighters, you know, out there, you know, have so much trouble in the gym right off the bat. But these guys adapt really quickly. Round two and a half, how do you deal with something like that? GSP comes in and you have to tell them, dude, you're out of shape. How do you they, deal? They love it, you know, especially George because he's so um, competitive and, you know, he has a good ego that, that he, he wants to get better at everything. So if you show him, you know, uh, certain aspects of what's missing and uh, he'll work really hard on them and that's why he had one of the biggest increases right away on he just adapted to the training right off the bat. For round three I want to know um, when it comes to these fighters that are coming towards you and we're talking about some of these great fighters the, the St. Pierre's and Torres is uh, Shane Carwin's I mean the list goes on and on in terms of who you've had come into your uh, general performance center do you, when you, when they're coming in, do you train for their strengths and, and their weaknesses and try to improve both those things? Or do you actually look and get footage on what their opponents have and actually train them for their opponents' strengths and their opponents' weaknesses? It's a good question, but uh, I'm always focusing on my athletes and what they need to do to get better. I don't really worry about uh, other guys too much. Um, you know, I want my guys to be the best athletes uh, possible. So get them better in every aspect they need to improve on, plus improve on what they're already good at. You know, George was powerful when he came in here, uh, but more from his speed. So we tried to get him a bit more powerful through gaining strength. And, you know, uh, you know now he's one of the you know most powerful guys uh, there is. Mike Ricci, same, same, same thing. You know, we're trying to get him more powerful and work on his strengths because these guys are natural, natural athletes. Uh, and then work on some of their weaknesses at the same time. If a guy is fighting, um, like when Rashad fought uh, Chuck Liddell. Mm -hmm. Chuck Liddell uh, doesn't set a huge pace and it's not going to be a grappling war where you're going to fatigue that much. It's going to be a lot of stand-up. So, you know, you're trying to, you, you can maybe um, 
leave out certain aspects of um, standing conditioning and work on uh, more power, power uh, strength during that camp. Mm -hmm. But if you're fighting someone like Sean Shirt back in the day or you know someone that's going to push the pace nonstop, you really have to be prepared in all aspects. All right, round four. It's a fine line, sometimes it's a bigger line than that, between amateur and pro status. Um, you know, you, we're talking about GSP, uh, Rashad Evans, Carwin Torres, Mark Gord, the list goes on and on of all the people that come here. Um, what, what does it take or what can people get out of APC that can maybe help you, help bring you to that level? Well, what's great about the amateur fighters that we have here, you know, the, the John McDessies, Yves Jambouins, you know, Mike Ritchie's there, they're ready to work really hard. So uh, they, they basically look at who's come in here. Uh, they, they feel you know, privileged to be able to train with those guys and you know, they want to aspire to be one of those guys down the road. So they actually, they actually come in here, they work hard, they, don't, you know, they do everything you say, uh, there's no questioning. Uh, it's basically they're here to get better and they know that they have to do everything that's asked of them to do that. So they'll work really hard and you know, eventually they'll get there if they put in all the work that they have to do. So that's the difference between, you know, sometimes you get, uh, you know, it's like that in every sport. You know, you get an, a, a veteran who's been going a long time. Uh, they, you know, training Roy Nelson on the show. He was like that. He, he basically had all the answers. He had done it a million times. He didn't really want to, you know, uh, learn so much at first. Uh, but then, you know, he, he fell into line. But, you know, some people are like that. You know, you have to, you have to sort of baby them a bit. But these amateurs are, are, are really working hard, you know, day in, day out. Do you ever have to like uh, throw some of these guys out of the gym and say you don't come back until your ass gets serious? I mean, yeah, it, it, it's happened before that that they they won't be allowed to come back uh, until you know. It's not my way or the highway, but you know at least at least train hard while you're here and at least uh, you know come in here with a good attitude and don't ruin it for everybody else. You know, if, it, it's all a big team and we're all a big family. You know, we all fight. We all. We, there's certain things that happen in, in any family, mm -hmm. but you know, don't ruin it for the rest of your family members. So if, if you're all a family, train hard together, uh, work hard. If you have a problem, you come to me or you, you know, you express it, you know, in a good way, and then you know, work from there. All right, now time for round five, last round here. We're at the final championship round. This is the most important question now, Jonathan. It is. Now we're talking <laughs> about a family members. Now, if you have a couple of big cousins that come in <laughs> here, you know, yeah. Like yeah. guys <laughs> like you know Nick and myself, uh, do you have something in place here at the General Performance Center to, for to make people have a before and after? You know, to go from like this to this because we're like at the same height right so technically i should look like you <laughs> technically you should uh, with anything you know a lot of people are scared to come here because they think that there's only professional athletes here and no uh you know regular people or people who are deconditioned but you know we have great trainers here you know i'll i'll take my time and work with everybody as long as they're willing to put in the work you know you can you can definitely get in shape you can set your goals and and uh, you could come in here and lose easily 10 pounds a month you know without even you know, try, you know, watch your diet and, and, and train somewhat hard and you're going to progress and you're going to basically be more motivated every time you come in here. So is it because the elevator being slow, is that on purpose? Because we have to take the stairs up in here. It's I think that, I already lost half a pound. That elevator got stuck on a few people this week, so. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, he had me a deconditioned as opposed to a lazy slob, so <laughs> I appreciate that, Jonathan. That was awesome. It was great having you, my friend. Great being here. We're back to bring down UFC 121 that's happening October 23rd on the food. And we're gonna look at the only fights that matters as far as we're concerned on this particular card. Wow. There's only two that as far as I'm concerned really makes any difference to, to uh, I guess, you know, the casual MMA uh, listener. I think obviously the hardcore fans are gonna love all the all the fights that are in of this course. card, but we're gonna focus on the two main ones that we think have that kind of uh, widespread, uh, widespread appeal, if you will. Starting with the uh, main events. Brock Lesnar. 
versus Cain Velasquez. Well, look at you. Look you know your stuff. <laughs> so you're talking about the return of the King, who uh, made a triumphant return against uh, uh, against Shane Garwin, uh, someone that uh, is very well known here, of course, at the APC, and we're of course at the Adrenaline Performance Center, uh, headed by one Jonathan Chambrook. And uh, so this has got some interesting implications in that you know Brock Lesnar, as far as I'm concerned, he was literally a good referee, a tolerant referee away from losing his uh, U.S. FC title. Uh, the question is to me, this is a good test for Cain Velasquez and a good litmus test I think for the people that are in Shane Carwin's camp to see where is uh, Shane Carwin versus Cain Velasquez. Uh, I think it was widely accepted that uh, Cain, uh, Cain Velasquez wasn't as far advanced in his overall training as a guy like Shane Carwin. Now against the same opponent than Brock Lesnar, who that comes with them the same skills, it'll be put to the test. My prediction here is actually going to be Cain Velasquez. I just wow. can't seem to give Brock Lesnar any any respect. I think that there you can you never point, do. Yeah, you can point to specific reasons as why he's won his last few matches, uh, which I don't think go in his favor, and we can debate that. You know, Gary at the franchise.ca, Nick at team, Nick at the franchise.ca. Right. We can always debate that, but I'm going to go with uh, Cain Velasquez. I think he's young, he's hungry, he's got. Uh, Pride of Mexico on his on his uh, okay. fist, and I think he's going to take care of business against Brock Lesnar. Uh, you never give Brock Lesnar any credit, and after he won his no. last fight, you said, you know what? Yeah, maybe okay. And you've been doing better in your predictions than me. So I'm hey. going again with Brock Lesnar now. You know, while he. Uh, technically had his uh, problems with uh, Kutzer and that was his first big fight against uh, Randy Kutzer. Uh, you know, Frank yeah, he Mir, held the I, have, I have two words for you, Frank Mir, and I mean, uh, that was not pretty if you were a Frank Mir fan. Uh, Brock Lesnar is the real deal. When people start realizing it, then they're going to start coming more onto my side of the yeah, UFC uh, part of things, right. as opposed to not giving somebody credit at all. Well, that second fight despite. against Frank Mir is the one legitimate win that he had, but I think you can point to issues with all of his other wins. Okay, bottom line is, is Velasquez seven of his eight fights five of them uh, were uh, taken care of in the first round which is fine which is good and dandy I don't see that happening against Brock Lesnar and I think that if he thinks he's gonna be taking this in the first round he's in for a world of hurt and I think Brock Lesnar is gonna take this fight handily in about three rounds all right well you know we're not that far off and I think in the uh, in the scoring so maybe this was something that will close the gap between you and I next maybe. up you've got uh, who Jake Shields versus Martin Kampman. Martin Kampman, you know, he's a striker extraordinaire who I think has developed his grappling uh, skills to, to the extent where he's probably good enough to compete uh, against most of the fighters in the UFC, but not against a guy like Jake Shields. Uh, Jake Shields is, uh, but he's also, he's not a great striker, but he's good enough to compete in the UFC as far as I'm concerned, and the, his grappling is at a level where it can completely nullify a guy like Martin Kampman. So, at the end of the day, if Martin Kampman doesn't, uh, doesn't get a strike and doesn't catch uh, a guy like Jake Shields uh, early I think you're gonna look for a potentially a boring match uh, hmm. but something that has GSP implications well, that's, that's right uh, the winner if, if uh, Jake Shields wins this fight apparently it's been told that uh, he will get the winner of Josh Koscheck versus Jean St. Pierre so uh, I'm gonna be predicting that that matchup finally happens George St. Pierre will take on Jake Shields as Jake Shields will emerge victorious from this victory well, from uh, this fight sorry well, that's it. With and I, and are you done? Yes, finally. <laughs> I've got Jake Shields winning this fight as well. It's Jake Shields' fight to win. It is his gateway to perhaps infamy as opposed to uh, what if he loses, what are the implications there? Uh, GSP, as far as I'm concerned, has nobody left to fight. He's going to fight Josh Koscheck again. I'm going to predict that he's going to win that again. And it's going to be a question of Jake Shields versus Campman. Campman came off two two great wins or two wins recently. Uh, recently, uh, 115 versus uh, uh, Paulo Thiago. Uh, that's all fine and dandy. He's not not going to be a match for Jake Shields, who is the uh, incumbent, the one that's going to take on GSP, and it's going to go that way tonight right, at, the, at the fight. All right, so those were our picks for UFC 121. This is Jonathan Chamberg here at Adrenaline Performance Center. You can check out the website. It's www.adrenalineperformancecenter.com. Updates daily. Uh, great programs there. You know, we have uh, exercises you can you can try at home. Programs you can try at home and uh, check it out. It's uh, there's blogs there. There's photos there. It's it's a fun site.